Hello, my name is Adam Novak and welcome to 3D Printing Tips and Tricks. We'll start by looking at the printing head. Most of the problems that we might encounter with a 3D printer will occur in this area, primarily being nozzle clogs. If you follow these steps here, you can avoid most of the nozzle clogs that may take place in your 3D printing experience. We will start by removing the screws at the front on the fan unit. This reveals the cooling unit underneath. This is important for keeping the filament cool before it reaches the actual heating block, so that the filament does not melt too early. By also removing the cooling unit, we can reveal the stepper motor, which drives the filament forward as the printing process takes place. The filament is protected from getting heated too early by entering a Teflon tube first, which then contacts directly with the heated nozzle. It is between the Teflon tube and the nozzle where there may be residue left over from previous prints. That is why I always do a filament load before a filament unload, and it cleans out any residue left over or any clogs in this nozzle before I try to unload or take out my filament. If I don't do this first, sometimes the filament may break and cause more problems in the future. I also recommend pushing down on a tab of the left of the stepper motor head. This relieves the tension on the filament, making it much easier to remove yourself. Now let's look at a simple object being printed. It'll be a rectangular prism. If we'll scale this up so we're only viewing one layer being printed first, and we call this one unit, we can see what happens if we double its size on its x-axis. It clearly takes twice as long to print, being two units of its original unit. If we doubled it now also along its y-axis, you can see it's now four times its original unit to print. And if we now doubled it again, along its z-axis, it is eight times its original unit to print. This is why doubling an object size takes eight times as long to print. It's called the cubic law. Now let's have a look at our rectangular prism being printed. And we'll only look at the first layer for this instance. What we'll see is because I've got a 0.4mm nozzle on my 3D printer and I've set the layer height to be 0.2mm, I'm able to cover twice the distance on the horizontal axis as opposed to the vertical axis. What this means is that the way we position our print can make a substantial difference in the outcome of the print itself, being the time and the resolution. So if we've rotated this rectangular prism to be horizontal it will actually be printed twice as quick. I've printed this rectangular prism both vertical and horizontal so you can compare the times. And as you can see, the vertical one has come out to be 17 minutes in its print time, yet the horizontal one is only 8 minutes. Be aware that you are sacrificing resolution for time, though this is often what you want to do. Now let's have a look at an example of a job I've done to someone. I've changed the dimensions for copyright purposes, though we can still use it for this. The first thing I'll look at for when I print this is which side is very flat, and this is one obvious way to print this. Though one thing I can notice is that there is a horizontal overhang which is not perfectly flat, as we can see just here, represented by the arrow. Because of this I can't force bridging which is something I often like to do. So what I might do in this case is rotate at 180 degrees. By doing this, I can still put my manual support material at the top here for the circle, and then put a physical wall connecting the top overhanging portion of the object here to the bottom, making this a perfect horizontal overhang. By doing this, I can force the software to use bridging rather than support material to create this object which can be a lot cleaner and easy to deal with. The next thing I'll look at doing is printing only the functioning parts or the parts of dimensions I might be unsure about. By doing this we can increase our productive time by only printing the parts and prototyping the parts that might need to be changed as we progress, and then adding the rest of the object to our final print. I would also try and split up our objects or prints whenever possible. By doing this, we can reduce the print times and prototyping times. For example, here I have pulleys being activated by gears. I simply use bolts and screws in real time to join them. In that way, I can change the ratios of the pulleys whenever I see fit, having a constant for the gears. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to stay in touch or support us on Patreon.